Hello everyone and welcome to the Pursuing Points YouTube channel. My name is Peter and I'm super excited about today's video because we are going to be talking about the American Express Platinum Card. Now this is the card that even if you don't have it, you probably are somewhat familiar with it. It has an awesome design, it's made of metal, it has all kinds of perks, and the annual fee is rather steep. Now, by the end of this video, you'll understand how we can chip away at that annual fee and make it a little bit more affordable, so stay tuned. But first, a little bit of history. The American Express Platinum Card has been around for a while, but not always in its current form. So it used to have an annual fee of about $450, with a decent number of perks, but it didn't have any real competition, right? City hadn't done much with their premium products, and Chase, their best card was the Sapphire Preferred, coming in at $95. Then all of a sudden, Chase comes out with the Sapphire Reserve at $450, and everybody signs up. It has this huge sign-up bonus, it's got great point offerings, it offers lounge access, the whole nine yards. American Express are quoted as saying, this is a full frontal assault from Chase. So what do they do? American Express had to go back to the drawing board because they knew if they were going to try to get some of the users back that they had lost, they're gonna, they were going to have to add some perks to the card. And that's exactly what they did. In so doing, however, they did raise the annual fee. So now the American Express Platinum carries an annual fee of $550. Now, there are a number of perks associated with the card. Right? You get lounge access, you get 5x on travel, uh, depending on how you book it. Uh, it has all sorts of purchase protections and stuff that you've come to expect from American Express. We're not really going to talk about any of that today. Instead, we're going to focus on the credits. Okay, So these are basically statement credits that you'll get when you use the MX Platinum with certain merchants. And when you add it all up, in a regular year, you're basically going to be paying less than $200 for this card if you can maximize the credits. And in some years, you're actually going to get American Express to pay you for having the card. And again, this says nothing of the lounge access and the point earning or anything like that. This is just from the credits. So let's just take it from the top. And I'm reading from my, uh, my notes over here. So the first credit is the $100 at Saks Fifth Avenue. Now, the way that this works, and it's kind of annoying, it's split up where you get two $50 credits per year, one from January to June, and then another one from July to December. What this basically means, if you go to Saks and you spend 100 bucks, you're going to get 50 of it back. Now, the thing with this credit, and the thing with all these credits, is that, ideally speaking, you're going to be getting credits for money that you would have spent no matter what, right? If Having this credit means that you're now spending money you wouldn't have otherwise spent at Saks. It's probably not worth it, right? Because you really can't go in there and spend less than a couple hundred dollars, right? But if you're someone who shops there, and generally speaking, people who hold this card might be those type, kinds of people, beautiful. We have $100 coming back to us in the form of $50 per every six months. Unfortunately, you can't use this for stuff like credit cards or so they say. Uh, if you know something different, leave a comment uh, down below. But based on the terms of service, credit cards, uh, Saks off Fifth Avenue, none of that stuff will work. It has to be at Saks, has to be an actual item. But we went from 550, now we're at 450 if we can maximize it. Next, uh, and I'm sort of going in order of like least interesting to most interesting. Uh, next, you have the $100 global entry or $85 TSA pre check credit. Now, this is applicable once every four years, right? So, global entry is a means of expediting your. Uh, foreign travel, right? It sort of speeds you through customs. TSA PreCheck speeds you through domestic security in the United States. Uh, I have TSA PreCheck. I don't yet have global entry, but I'm considering it. I consider TSA PreCheck to be probably the best investment I could have made or you can make in your traveling experience. Uh, I get through security in no time at all, and I just can't really imagine flying without it. The thing that's interesting is that global entry actually includes TSA PreCheck. So if you get this card and you're going to use the credit, get global entry because then you'll have both. Now, if you already have a card which offers you the credit, like you have the Sapphire Reserve, for example, what's interesting here is that you can, of course, use the credit for a friend or family member, right? So I've used some of my global entry credits for family members, paid for them, and then I get reimbursed. 
and again, this, this is only applicable once every four years, right? So American Express doesn't want you paying for other people every year. Uh, they want you to use it once every four years. And that sort of coincides with uh, the expiration of these programs. So check that out. But in the year that you will use it, that's a $100 credit total, which means from $550 minus one, minus one, we're now at $350. And we still have two more credits to go. Next. This one's pretty interesting. It's, it's the $200 airline credit. Now, the reason that this credit is interesting is that American Express specifically says this credit is only for incidental fees and other charges, right? So they, they uh, explain that as check bag fees, itinerary change, phone reservation, pet flight, etc. If you're watching this YouTube channel, chances are these are not fees that you're incurring, right? I, for one, have never incurred I guess any of the fees on this list, except for uh, airport lounge day passes. Right, every now and then I'll buy a day pass to a lounge. Uh, it doesn't include in-flight Wi-Fi because that's not charged by the airline. So chances are you're never gonna be hit with these. But what's interesting about this credit is that you can actually use it to buy gift cards. Now, my disclaimer is this. American Express says you are not allowed to do this. And what that means is that if you try to buy a gift card or a flight or something, and you don't get reimbursed, you have absolutely zero recourse, okay? Now, the way that this credit itself works is that you actually have to select an airline at the beginning of the year. Your choices are Alaska, American, Delta, Frontier, Hawaiian, JetBlue, Spirit, Southwest United. Of those, only three of them that we know of will get you reimbursed using gift cards. Those are American, Southwest, and Delta. With American, you have to buy $100 gift card increments. Delta, it's $50 increments. You must do it on desktop, mobile won't work. In Southwest, we're told any amount. Now, for me, I fly a ton on Delta. If I can get reimbursed for the, for the gift cards, this is basically just $200 cash for me because I'm going to spend $200 a year on Delta. If you don't fly on these airlines or you don't have a base nearby or what have you, it's probably gonna be a little bit more difficult, but because American and Delta are here, you should be okay. Uh, again, understand the terms and conditions, understand what American Express expects you to use these credits for, and don't be upset if you don't get reimbursed because you have no recourse. That being said, 200 for the airline credit, 100 for Global TSA, uh, and then 100 for SACS. We're up to $400 off so far. Right, so the remainder annual fee is 150 bucks, and we have the arguably the best credit of all, $200 with Uber. Now, the way that this credit works is that you get $15 every single month to use on Uber. So basically what they expect you to do is, when you get the MX Platinum, you're gonna hook it up to your Uber account as your sort of default payment method, and then the first $15 that you spend every month will get automatically reimbursed to you. The reason that this is $200 is that in December, you're actually going to get $35, okay? Now, I don't take many Ubers, right? I live in New York City. I often will take the subway. Uh, my backup is usually a taxi because they're readily available. Uh, and of course, you, you can just walk everywhere. But if I did want to use this, that would be great. But the other interesting thing here is that this is also applicable to Uber Eats, okay? Now, in New York City, spending $200 a year on delivery is no problem. Again, this perk is basically just cash. And of course, it also, or, uh, if you have the MX Platinum, you also get Uber, what do they say, they call it, VIP status, where you only get drivers above a certain rating level. Uh, from what I've read, because I don't have it, my understanding is that it would, although the drivers do have higher rating levels, you end up waiting longer, so it ends up not being as worth it. Uh, I would prefer expediency to a high rating uh, because I haven't had too many bad experiences with Uber uh, or any ride share for that matter. So you can use it with Uber Eats, you can use it with Uber, that's 200 bucks. So for those of you keeping track at home, in the year where you get to use your global TSA, your global entry, your TSA pre-check credit, you're at 200 with Uber, 200 with airline, 100 with Saks, 100 with global entry for a grand total of 600 bucks. So like I said at the beginning, in the year where you get to use that credit, Amex is gonna pay you $50 for this card. 
And in years where you don't get to use that credit, okay, now uh, you're gonna pay Amex $50 for this card, right? So the thing that's interesting about credits is how we can sort of systematically knock down that annual fee and make it more, uh, make it less uh, of a burden on our wallets, so to speak. And of course, again, if you're traveling in and out of places that have Centurion lounges, if you're traveling in and out of places that have Delta lounges or you fly in Delta often, the lounge access with this card is, is unparalleled, right? A lounge pass, a yearly pass at Delta's lounge, I believe is something like $500, right? And you're getting that for free with this product. So when you're sort of considering the Amex Platinum, be sure to look at its holistic benefits or holistic benefit package. The credits can help ease the blow. Even if you can't use SACs, even if you're not ready for the global TSA entry, uh, the $200 airline and the $200 Uber, I mean, this is a net 150 card. So for 150 bucks a year, you get unlimited access to Delta lounges, Centurion lounges, 5X on various travel, and everything else that they offer. So it's a pretty good deal, especially if you can maximize the credits. And I've talked about it a lot on the podcast. I'm sort of circling the card as something I would like to maybe add to my wallet someday. I haven't done it yet. Uh, but comment down below, let me know if you think I, I should. And if you have this card, I'd love to know what you think about it. Is it something that you're gonna keep for a while? Do you plan on canceling it? If so, why? Uh, let me know. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Would love it if you would subscribe. Would love it if you would leave a like. And uh, we'll see you next time.